Hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys doing fine. So today I'm going to share with you the new format of paper for writing. So I don't think there are a lot of changes, only minor changes. So if you want to know, keep watching. Paper for writing Malay IGCSE new format. These are the writing skills that you need to know in order for you to answer paper for. Fill in forms providing simple details, communicate simple factual information in writing using everyday vocabulary and expression. Write a series of simple phrases and sentences linked with simple connector relating to personal life, immediate environment and everyday topics. Example, writing about a holiday. Write simple connected text, example, email messages, article. On familiar topic, example, plans and arrangement, like and dislike, family, home environment, hobbies and interests, education, work and travel. Describe past events and experiences, opinions, hopes and ambition and give brief reason for opinion and plans. Communicate with reasonable accuracy using a range of structures, stances, time, frames and vocabulary relevant to the given situation. Use simple connector example and, but, because, then to link a series of shorter discrete elements into a connected sequence of points. This is the suggested time for you to answer. Bahagian 1 where you need to fill in the form. Uh, 3 minute. Bahagian 2 karangan pendek 80 to 90 words within 15 to 20 minutes. Bahagian 3 karangan panjang 130 to 140 words within 30 minutes if you can write less than that it's better because you will have time between 7 to 10 minutes to semak karangan anda to check back your essay. Okay, but now we're going to see uh, the paper for writing, specimen paper. It's one hour paper. Okay, the first one, bahagian satu, you need to lengkapkan borang dalam bahasa Melayu. Fill in the form. Okay, jumlah anggota keluarga anda, your family members, how many people, makanan kegemaran, your favorite food, hobby, dua hobby, haiwan kesayangan, and this one continued, mata pelajaran kegemaran, bagaimana anda pergi ke sekolah. So, for the bahagian satu, the mark is five. Now, we go to bahagian dua, short essay, 80 to 90 words. But this time, it's not 15 mark, it's 12 mark. Gambarkan rumah anda di mana bilik, apakah yang anda buat untuk membantu di rumah, apakah yang anda tidak suka buat di rumah, di manakah anda ingin tinggal pada masa depan. Jelaskan. Now we're going to the last part of the paper. Jawab soalan 3A atau 3B. So they give you two options, whether you want to answer 3A or you want to answer 3B. 3A, permohonan ke college atau university, your application to go to university or college. So, the marks for part 3 is 28 mark before the old format is 30 marks. Okay, so you need to answer all the points given. Question 3B, menaiki kapal terbang. Anda telah menaiki kapal terbang bersama keluarga anda untuk bercuti, tulis satu artikel untuk majalah sekolah anda tentang pengalaman tersebut. Gambarkan pengalaman anda di lapangan terbang sebelum anda berlepas. So, these are the points that you need to answer. It's 28 mark. Choose one only. Okay. So, in order for you to answer paper 4, you need to know what are the penanda wacana. Penanda wacana means the Malay connectors. So, here I prepare uh, a list for you to refer and use in your essay. So, feel free to pause at your own pace. Next one. Another one. Another wachana. Another wachana. The last one. Another wachana. So you can use all this penanda wachana. You can apply all this penanda wachana in your essay. So, these are the past year questions that I, when I look through within the last five years, these are the questions. So, for Karangan Pendek for 2016, Cita-Cita Sebagai Ahli Sukan. So, uh, in the old format, they have three options for students to choose. But now, it's only two. 
Now we look at what are the questions uh, in the past year. Majlis hari jadi, lawatan sambil belajar ke Eropah, berjumpa sebuah beg besar. 2017, keluarga anda, kawan anda sakit, you need to write email, hari sukan, laporan, rakan belum tiba dalam pangan terbang, cerita. 2018, percutian musim panas, percutian yang tidak dapat dilupakan, pertandingan bercerita, format laporan, pengirim surat misteri, cerita. Tahun 2019, binatang kesayangan. Majlis Perkahwinan Abang, uh, format email, pesta buku laporan, kejadian di kafe, cerita, guru kegemaran anda, tidak hadir ke sekolah, surat, kempen kebersihan taman perumahan laporan, misteri rumah usang, cerita. So, these are the keywords for you to answer bahagian satu where you need to fill in the form. So, I list down all the common things that uh, the question might ask for you to answer part 1. So, usually they will ask about your name, kad pengenalan, alamat, tarikh lahir, tempat lahir, bayaran, tanda tangan, bangsa, umur, kaum, warga negara, perayaan, pakaian tradisional, bahasa pertuturan, agama, nombor telefon, tarikh daftar masuk. Okay, so now we go to tips to answer Part 2, the, uh, the short essay and also the long, longer essay. So, you need to membaca soalan dengan teriti, read the question carefully, menyenaraikan kata kunci yang berkaitan soalan. So, I would like to stress the, the second point. Uh, in your exam paper, make use of the space that they give you at the side of the question. So, make use to just scribble write all the keywords that you know that you can relate to the questions. Third, menjawab semua setiap soalan. So, they give you points for you to answer. Try your best to answer all the points given. Four, mengetahui format soalan karangan, email, surat dan laporan. So, when I look back the past year, the famous uh, repeated type of uh, format for your essay, they always ask about email, surat and laporan. So, therefore, it's very important for you to know the format for these three essay. Um, number lima, cuba menggunakan simpulan bahasa atau pepatah yang berkaitan soalan. So, I would like to challenge advanced students to try to use simpulan bahasa, at least know few simpulan bahasa or idioms that you can use to relate with the essay to make your essay stand out. Now we going to try one question, contoh soalan karangan pendek. So let's go through the question together. Bayangkan anda tinggal di sebuah kampung yang anda sangat suka, tulis sepucuk surat tidak rasmi kepada seorang rakan anda di luar negara. Panjang surat anda hendaklah 80, 80 hingga 90 patah perkataan. Surat anda mengandungi maklumat berikut. Di manakah lokasi kampung itu? Sejak bilakah anda mula tinggal di situ? Apakah tempat-tempat menarik yang berdekatan? D. Mengapakah anda suka tinggal di situ? If you realize that in past year, they always going to ask what you like about the place, what you don't like about the place. So, please uh, aware and take note what are the adjective word when you want to describe the things that you like and what are the adjective word to describe the things that you don't like. Okay, so A, asking about location, B, asking about since when you live there, what are the interesting places nearby, why do you like to stay there. So it's 80 to 90 words, so I practice this question with my student. So before I ask my student to write the essay, I make sure they know the format of surat tidak rasmi. So, for surat tidak rasmi, you need to the, you need to have the alamat pengirim, the address, tarikh. Okay, make sure your tarikh, the month is in Malay. Find out how to spell January to December in Malay. And then, kata menghadap, kehadapan sahabatku diingati. Or you can say, menemui sahabatku. That's a common thing to start your, your letter. And then, Saudara panggilan hormat here. If it's a girl, then it's saudari. If it's a boy, then it's saudara. 
and then number five to start your letter state the purpose of writing this letter and you can find the purpose of writing this letter from your question paper what I mean is, tujuan saya menulis surat ini adalah the reason why I'm writing this letter is okay, you can you can see from the question saya mahu berkongsi tentang kampung you take from the question yang saya tinggal kepada saudari or saudara depends who you're writing this letter to and then setakat you need to have the penutup setakat ini sajalah surat saya buat kali ini and then you and your essay the last part is to have your signature okay sahabatmu if you writing this letter to your friend that is sahabatmu if you writing this letter to your uh, mother then anakmu depends on the questions Okay, the last one is signature. So, after you understand the question, you know the format. Now, my tips is for you to list down every possible vocabulary that related to the questions. So, since we're writing about kampung, so these are all the keywords that uh, I prepared for my student. But usually, I will ask them... I will give them some in Malay and some in English. Then they will have to translate from Malay to English, English to Malay. That way they will learn um, to search the meaning of the word. So feel free to click pause as I go through the next slide. So these still are the vocabulary that related to kampung. So these are the, this is the contoh karangan from my student, my own student. So she did use some of the word that I suggested here. You can refer to that and you can try these questions. And the one that I highlight here, di hampir, it should be berhampiran, not di hampir. This is a quite good essay for 80 to 90 words. And I also prepare the vocabulary that uh, related to pocutian and lawatan so that you can use this one um, when you practice to write an essay about lawatan or pocutian. Feel free to pause at your own pace. And as we go through the as I go through the past year, I can see they repeat asking about sukan and activity riada so i prepared the vocabulary for sukan and riada for you as well next one sukan riada dan activity riada and there's also keywords for you to elaborate keluarga or your rakan baik your best friend these are the words that you can use if the question asks you to describe about your family and friend And this one are the keywords for you to use for majlis and perayaan, event and celebration. Feel free to pause at your own pace. So this is the thing that I mentioned just now. I would like to challenge the advanced student to know some simpulan bahasa and apply them in their essay. So this is the list for simpulan bahasa. This is the maksud, the meaning and the type of essay that you, they can apply this simpulan bahasa. And I advise you to ask your teacher whether you apply the simpulan bahasa correctly in your essay. And next one is peribahasa, the idioms and slogan. Except for number three, number three is the only slogan that I list here, majulah sukan untuk negara. So in the column maksud, I put pendahuan. It means I suggest you to use this slogan as your introduction. For example, slogan majulah sukan untuk negara harus dipegang. Dot, dot, dot. You continue on your own. Okay. Another peribahasa that you can apply in another theme of essay, 
bagai pinang di belah dua, you can apply in majlis perkahwinan wedding essay. Another example, another list of peribahasa. And this is the format karangan email since this is the hot uh, repeated questions in the past year. So I provide you the format for email. You should have daripada, from, kepada, to and perkara the subject. This one is the name of the receiver and at the bottom the sender. And then karangan, format karangan laporan. At the top, you should have the tajuk and then your paragraph. And at the bottom, disediakan oleh, prepared by. Your signature should be here. Your name, setiausaha secretary of which club. Uh, and then your school name and the tarikh. The tarikh, the month should be in capital letter. And again, make sure you uh, spell the month in Malay correctly. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any question, feel free to ask in the comment section below. And what do you think about this paper? Is it easier? And if you don't know how to apply those idioms in your essay, feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment on this video. Thank you. Bye.